Hi, I'm Tom Hackett, and today we're going to look at the three market forces driving commercial IP adoption. So the first, the first market force is SOC development costs. SOC development costs. All right. So developing SOCs is expensive. But to put this in perspective, if we go back to the dot-com era, around the year 2000, a semiconductor startup only needed $10 million to go from concept to first silicon. We fast forward several years and get up to the, say, 20 nanometer technology node, and that cost had ballooned 15 times, up to $150 million. Just a few years after that, at the 16 nanometer node, the cost now doubled to $300 million. So this exorbitant cost means that SOCs absolutely must be delivered on time. They have to work the first time. And most importantly, they need to be differentiated from the competition so that they'll be a commercial success. And that commercial success has a big impact. And that's the second force we want to look at which is semiconductor industry consolidation. OK, so this is one. This is number two. Semiconductor industry consolidation. So what we've seen is three years ago, the sum total of mergers and acquisitions in the semiconductor space was about $30 billion, with a B. But just two years after that, that merger and acquisition total grew almost 5x to $140 billion. So there are many few companies developing SOCs than there were before. And the reason for that, it, it, this is really proof that it was becoming increasingly hard to achieve product differentiation. So now, the third factor market force driving commercial IP adoption is the specialization of SOC standard interfaces. Specialization of the interfaces. So and what we mean by that is that each major interface type goes through a series of generations. So in the DDR4 line, or DDR line that went from DDR1, 2, 3, 4, now we have the new one, LPDDR4X. In PCI Express, uh, the PCI SIG just recently announced the new PCI Express 5.0 specification that takes the data transmission speeds up to 32 giga transactions per second. So that's one factor. Another factor is the extensions to existing standards. And by extensions, I think mean things that weren't initially directly related to that standard. So for instance, in the USB space, USB now has a power delivery specification to deliver up to 100 watts of power to connected devices. It's also able to tunnel other protocols through its alternate mode specification. So it could, can tunnel DisplayPort, for instance. And this enables a single uh, cable to basically handle all the data and power for a connected device. Now, these things are causing an increasing burden on the SOC development teams because they have to keep pace with these evolving standards. Now, when you think about it, this sets up a direct conflict. It's, if it's very important to have a differentiated product, why do you have your SOC developers working on standard interfaces? That just doesn't make sense, right? And so, where does this lead? Where it leads is that SOC teams have to be more efficient and more focused than ever before. And so it makes sense to offload some of that development effort from the internal teams to commercial IP, to buy IP off the shelf and integrate it into your SOC. And as a matter of fact, this really is something that's no longer debated. All the successful SOC companies are doing this. But the question is, 
what IP vendor are you going to trust with the future of your, of your company and the, your next critical SOC project? And that's something we're going to cover in the next session. So until then, I'm Tom Hackett for Whiteboard Wednesday. Thank you.